Hello, this video is about the properties of real numbers. The first property we're going to talk about is commutative property of addition. There's also a commutative property of multiplication. Two or more numbers can be added in any order without changing the sum. That's the commutative property of addition. Two or more numbers can be multiplied in any order without changing the product, which is the community property of multiplication. The next property there is the associative property. There's a property, the associative property of addition and the associative property of multiplication. For all real numbers A, B, and C, the sum is always the same regardless of their grouping. The same is true for the product when you are multiplying if the grouping changes. Distributive property, the property that states that for all real numbers A, B, and C, if you have A times the quantity B plus C, that's equal to A times B, A times B, A times C, and adding those two together. Same is true whether you have A times B plus C or B minus C, you can still work that same distribution there. The inverse property of multiplication is the product of any non-zero number and its reciprocal is 1. The inverse property of multiplication says that when you multiply a number by its reciprocal, the result will be 1. Inverse property of addition is when the sum of its number and its opposite will be 0. So the inverse property of addition will result in a 0 sum. The inverse property of multiplication will result in a product of 1. Identity property of multiplication says that for all real numbers, A, a times 1 is going to be equal to A. When you multiply by 1, the identity or value of the number does not change. The identity property of addition is when you add a 0 to a number and it does not change its value. A plus 0 is still going to be A. The multiplication property of 0 is for all real numbers. A, if you multiply by 0, the result will be 0. Anytime you multiply by 0, the result will be 0. So. Looking at the commutative property of addition, you can add a, a set of numbers in any order and still get the same result. For example, if I have 2 plus 6 plus 8 plus 4, I could add those from left to right. 2 plus 6 is 8, 8 plus 8 gives me 16, 16 plus 4 gives me 20. Or I can mix it up and do the 2 and the 8 together and then the 6 and the 4 together. Both of those give me 10 and then add those two 10s together to give me 20. That is an example of the commutative property of addition. Here's another example of the commutative property of addition using real numbers, some rational numbers here with decimals. If I have 2.25 and 3.13 and 7.75 all being added together, I might want to rearrange it to make it a little bit easier. If I notice that the first and third terms are both have multiples of 0.25 at the end, they can add those together and I'm going to end up getting a whole number when I do that. So I rearrange the problem to bring these two next to each other, that is using the commutative property of addition. When I add these two, I now get a whole number of 10, which is easy to add to 3.13 to get 13.13. .13. Whereas if I had gone from right to left, I might have taken a little bit more time with that 0.13 being mixed in. Commutative property of multiplication says you can multiply a set of numbers in any order you like and still get the same result. For example, if I have 2 times 6 times 5, if I'm going from left to right, 2 times 6 is 12, times 5 is going to give me 60. Or I could mix it up and I could do the 6 times 5 first to get 30, then 2 times 30 is going to give me 60. Still end up with that same result. Here's another example of the community of property multiplication with a decimal value here, 2 times 8 times 4.5. Well, looking at this, I see that 4.5 in the end, and being the math geek that I am, I know that whenever I multiply something of 0.5 times 2, I'm going to get a whole value. So I may want to multiply the 2 and the 4.5 first. If I think of that as $4.50, 2 times $4.50 is going to give me $9. So I have 9 times 8, 9 times 8 is 72. Rearranging it made it easier than doing 2 times 8 gives you 16. 16 times 4.5, I'd probably have to bring out a calculator for that. Here I didn't have to. 
Uh, here's another example. Uh, commutative property does not combine with the multiplication property of addition in here. When you've got the commutative property, yes, commutative property works for multiplication. Yes, it works for addition, but it does not work for the combination here. I cannot rearrange this to be 3 plus 3 times 7 plus 5 instead of change things around. If I do 3 times 5 and add 7, I do get 22, but if I do the 5 plus 7, I would get 12, 3 times 12 is 36, not the same thing. I can't switch the order of these here, I can't make this 3 times 7 plus 5. That would be 21 plus 5, which would be 26. Again, not going to work together there on that. So you've got to be careful about that combination of adding and adding, multiplying. It's not going to work with a commutative property. Here we have the associative property of addition. Associative property is all about grouping. Here I have the 8 plus 1 group, which means we have to multiply and add those first. So if we change the grouping and we group the 2 plus 8 first, is it going to change the result? Well, 8 plus 1 is 9. Add the 2, you get 11. 2 plus 8 is 10. Add the 1, you get 11. It still adds up to 11. Notice how the numbers in these two, these two examples stay in the same order. 2, 8, 1. 2, 8, 1. The only thing that changed was what was inside of the grouping. Instead of having 8 and 1 grouped, it's now 2 and 8 grouped. Associate is all about the group changing. What's inside the grouping symbols, that's changing. So here's an example of the multiplication side of that. Here I have 2 times the 4 plus 4 times 3 grouped. If I change the grouping to the 2 times 4, if I do 2 times 4, I get 8 times 3, I get 24. If I do 4 times 3, I get 12. Times 2, I get 24, either way. Again, notice how 2, 4, 3, 2, 4, 3, the order of the numbers stay the same. What changed was what was inside of those grouping symbols. Associate property does not apply to combinations of multiplying and adding, although multiplication is associative, addition is commutative, the combination is not. I cannot change this to group the 3 times 5 first versus the 5 plus 7 first, it would not give me the same result. Okay, pop quiz. Name the property that each equation illustrates. Pause the video if you want to be surprised here. Alright, the answer here is associative property of addition. 9 plus 3 is being grouped here. Over here the grouping is 3 plus 7. This one, we have 4 times 7 times 20, which now became 20 times 4 times 7. The order changed. No grouping involved. This is the commutative property of multiplication. This one, what's the property here? Careful. It looks like the, uh, the grouping changed, but look what's inside the grouping here. 5 plus 8, 5 plus 8. The grouping did not change. What did change? The order of when you're adding the 3. The 3 inch was here in front here, here it's at the end. So this is the commutative property of addition going on here. Don't be fooled by moving parentheses. You've got to be careful. What's inside the parentheses is what makes the difference. Uh, distributed property. I'm going to have a different video on distributed property. The distributed property involves multiplication and addition. There is no of on the end of this property. It's just distributed property. This property is often used to bypass the order of operations or to simplify problems to be easily done in your head instead of on paper. Mental math. And we'll be discussing that in another video. Ways to remember which one's which here, commute. The word commute is what we call the trip you take to and from work, or as a student, to and from school each day. It involves travel or movement. And the commutative property is all about the numbers moving. Commutative property, movement. Associate. Associate is a friend or co-worker. Someone is part of a group, a group of friends, a group of workers. Associate. Someone who is a part of a group. So the associate property involves grouping. Identity property. When two numbers are added together, they are changed as a result. When you add two numbers, you take a number 5 and you add a 6 to it, it's no longer a 5. Its identity or value has changed. There is one exception. When you add 0 to a number, 
5 plus 0 is not going to change the value of 5. So the identity stays the same. So if you add 0 to a number, the number stays the same. This is what's known as the identity property of addition. Here's an example, negative 1,254 plus 0 is negative 1,254. Identity property of multiplication, when two numbers are multiplied together, normally that changes the value of that first factor. But there is a time when the second factor could make it still the same. If you multiply by a 1, the, the, fact, the original factor does not change. So that identity stays intact. So whenever you multiply by 1, you are actually using the identity property of multiplication. Again, identity properties, both identity properties deal with the operation not changing the original number's value or identity. Hence the name identity property. Inverse property of addition, we have already learned about opposites. And we know that when you add opposites, you get zero. Well, this is just putting a new name to it. This name is known as the inverse property of addition. When you add opposites, the result is zero. So if you're adding to what number would you add to it? You would add the inverse or opposite to it. Negative 5 plus 5 gives you a zero. Zero property of multiplication. Many times this is not given its own property name. Many times it's really just a rule, but it does actually have a property name, zero property of multiplication. Whenever you multiply anything by zero, the resulting product will be zero. So if I take 1,374,698,991, if I multiply that by zero, the result will be zero. It doesn't matter how big or small the number is, you multiply by zero, the result will be zero. Inverse property of multiplication. Now the inverse property of addition, when you add the two, you result in zero. The inverse property of multiplication, when you multiply the two, the result will be one. And to find out what number you need, you would do the inverse or reciprocal of the number you're given. The inverse of 5, or reciprocal of 5, is 1 over 5, because we can write every whole number as a fraction by putting it over 1. So 5 times 1 fifth equals 1. 3 fourths times 4 thirds. If I do that multiply, 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 over 12 is 1. And if I take 3 fourths and flip it upside down, I get 4 thirds. Whenever you multiply a number by its reciprocal, the result will be 1. Okay, pop quiz, name the property that each equation illustrates here. We're 6 plus 0, what's the property? 6 plus 0 equals 6? That's the identity property of addition. 3 fourths times 5 fifths equals 15 twentieths. That is the identity property of multiplication. 5 over 5 is 1. And when you multiply by 1, you are using the identity property of multiplication. 3 fourths and 15 twentieths do still have the same value. They may look a little different, but when you reduce that, you end up getting back to 3 fourths. So it is the same value. Here we have 7 plus negative 7 equals 0. That would be the inverse property of addition. This one's a little tricky here. We have 2 minus 8 equals negative 8 plus 2. That is the commutative property of addition. This is not addition, but this can be changed to addition by doing the keep it, change it, change it making this a 2 plus a negative 8, and when you change, which makes, commutative, which makes it an addition problem, which is commutative, so as long as you think of this as a sign for this number, you can change the order and still get the same answer. 2 minus 8 is going to give you negative 6, negative 8 plus 2 is going to give you negative 6. All right, now this last time we have 4 times the quantity 3 plus 8, then we have the quantity 3 plus 8 times 4, that is the commutative property. The multiplication did change. Now here's a combination of addition and multiplication. And you said, Mr. Funk, that's not luck. The only thing that's changing here is the order of the multiplying. You originally had this time, you had four times this, and now you have this times four. The only thing that changed was the order of the multiplication. I did not mix the adding and the multiplying there. The only thing that changed was the order of the multiplying. 
So one other thing to note here is whenever you're asked to simplify, is assume that you will simplify completely, and this includes removing parentheses. And you may use the distributor property to do that. Hope this is helpful. See you in class.